Hey, welcome and thanks for watching. Um, you can take a moment to like this video if you find it useful and subscribe to the channel, that would be great. Um, I wanted to, to talk about um, being able to break into software engineering and I want to do a three-part series, so this is the second part. And the three phases that we're kind of going over are this first part about uh, the application process and trying to get noticed so that you can land an interview. The second phase that we're going to talk about in this video is actually once you have uh, the opportunity to get an interview and have those lined up, like what do you actually do in the interview process? And the third part is actually some of the on the job experience. In my personal opinion, this is uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't think about that part and I want to spend more time on that in a follow up video. So like I said today, in this video, we're going to kind of look at once you've landed your interviews and you're getting prepped for that and you want to stand out in your interviews, you know, how do you start approaching that? So in the first video, I was talking about some comparisons between uh, big tech and startups. So to, to reiterate what I kind of said in the first video, I do have experience in both. Um, I spent just under or approximately eight years in a startup that transitioned to small to medium sized business as an engineering manager almost the entire time. So I was recruiting for this startup basically through um, my entire time there. And then now I'm at Microsoft, so obviously a big tech company. So we're gonna have the perspective from there as well. And in my opinion, there are tons of differences. Um, I am gonna be kind of speaking in a general sense. So, um, you know, when when you do that, you're gonna end up, you know, you can't, you can't make statements that are true in all cases, but this is from my experience. My personal opinion I hope this kind of helps so um, I wanted to start by talking about some big tech comparisons because I think there's so much information out there about interviewing for big tech that I would um, you know probably do a disservice to try and get into that uh, there's so much great content that talks about the types of questions and that kind of thing so I just wanted to touch on that because um, a lot of what's out there for big tech is quite accurate in my opinion and then I want to spend more time kind of looking at some startup kind of stuff if you're applying to those types of jobs. So with big tech, um, I would say the pretty common pattern um, is that you have a handful of interviews lined up, right? And that could look like um, anywhere from two to five kind of range. And uh, generally, um, you're going to be talking with a few different people within the team or the organization that you'd be working for. And the breakdown of questions that you'd be seeing is something like, um, it kind of depends on the level that you're going for. So assuming you're watching this, you're trying to get, you know, breaking into the industry, probably more junior roles, right? And if that's the case, um, I would say the breakdown would be probably mostly um, coding questions. And these are... Generally, they're not like I'm not a big fan of these, but generally, you know, things like on uh, uh, lead code or um, uh, algo expert, um, and there's lots of examples of this, right? So you're given a problem that um, might be a little bit vague, so you ask some questions about trying to, you know, set up the parameters. The interviewers actually expect that you ask questions, right? So you're kind of setting up the parameters for um, some algorithm that you have to go right, and then you implement it. Um, you know, you do want to be talking uh, to your interviewers about how you approach, you know, why you're making certain decisions. Um, they'll get you to kind of debug it. Maybe you talk about optimizations. You're explaining like, you know, this algorithm might be more performant, but you're sacrificing memory or, you know, if there's some of the design constraints you asked about for this algorithm, you want to save on memory so it's less performant in terms of a uh, runtime. Um, that's the kind of thing that you'd be going over. Uh, big O notation for performance um, is usually really common. Um, but some of the questions are kind of designed to be a little bit tricky, I would say. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of having like questions that trick you. It seems kind of ridiculous to me, but um, that is kind of a common theme, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, they, they do expect you to ask clarifying questions and you'd be coding um, and I would say it depends on, on the company, right? But they might say that you can code in any language. They might say, you know, ahead of time, like they're, you would know they're a C-sharp shop or a Java shop, and they expect you to be programming in that language. But generally, I would say they kind of, they give you some freedom to pick a language to code in. Um, usually <laughs> something like pseudocode is not, um, you know, not quote-unquote allowed, but I assume that if you were maybe struggling to kind of, 
uh, get all the way through it and you wanted to pseudocode a little bit of it or something, they might kind of accept that. Um, but generally not scoring as high if you're just using pseudocode throughout the, uh, the answering of that question. So most of the questions that you would be getting are algorithmic questions like that. Um, and then you might be faced with some system design questions. I would say this is a lot more common as you go up in seniority. So again, if you're watching this, maybe not totally relevant, but something to think about, right? So this is where they'd be asking you, again, it depends on the place you're applying for. If it's, uh, you know, if there's a lot of cloud computing involved, they might ask about setting up services, how those might be running, how they would communicate with each other, different design decisions you'd make for that. Uh, maybe a little bit of pseudocode in some areas, right? So if you had to make a service that talked to a database, maybe they might ask you what uh, some of the um, you know, operations might look like and how you might code that from a high level. So um, if for a junior role, you might see maybe one or two of these, but I would say definitely heavier towards the, um, the coding and algorithm questions. And again, just to, to reiterate, I'm kind of not going deep into this and how, how you tackle those because there's so many resources out there. Literally, you could jump on, on YouTube, uh, search anyone's video for example, interview questions at uh, certain tech companies even, and uh, you'll get some examples, right? So I would say that um, for big tech interviews, that's pretty common. So uh, we're talking about trying to stand out in these interviews. And I would say it's actually, in my opinion, kind of difficult to stand out in the uh, interview process for big tech because a lot of the time it involves kind of nailing these questions, right? Um, depending on the interviewer you have, that might look very different. So uh, unfortunately, like I'm going to say unfortunately, because I don't necessarily agree with this, but you might have an interviewer that that fully expects that you nail the coding part. You kind of go in with the exact right algorithm, approach it a certain way. So honestly, really practicing algorithm questions, coding them out uh, can go a really, really long way for certain interviewers, right? Um, my personal opinion, and it's probably a little bit rarer with some of these big tech interviews, is that um, I don't expect you get the right answer right away. Um, and in fact, if you don't, it's actually a more interesting interview because I like talking with candidates and saying, hey, like you made this decision. What happens if we think about this other constraint? Um, so personally, I think it's a great opportunity to, to be able to demonstrate your thought process, how you think through problem solving. Um, and... For, I'll kind of get to this a little bit more later when we talk about the startup side and where my, you know, my opinion sort of lies. But um, I do think that your explanation of your implementation of your algorithm um, uh, can go a really, really long way. So, um, you know, everyone else that you might be competing with for, for these interviews and stuff, they're probably practicing these coding and algorithm questions too, right? So I think that just memorizing it and having, having to get lucky and getting one that's familiar is not really enough. I think like understanding why you make those decisions in your algorithms, being able to elaborate on that, um, kind of like if you understand them when they throw you curveballs and say, well, what about if we change this constraint? You might not have memorized the answer and practiced it, right? But if you understand it, you might be able to say, oh yeah, we traded, you know, this, um, this data structure to reduce memory, but now they're saying, uh, you know, this is a different constraint over here, so we should flip that around. Um, so understanding <laughs> those design decisions, I think, is really beneficial, um, and you can kind of stand out a little bit if you're able to elaborate on some of that. Um, and then, of course, for a junior role, if you do have a system design thing, you can probably stand out a little bit more um, than some of the other junior candidates if you can... Um, work on some of those system design questions ahead of time. Again, lots of examples. We'll talk about message queues, databases, um, redundancy in services, things like that. So um, yeah, lots of examples out there. But that's, in my opinion, kind of the big tech scene for, uh, for interviews. Um, so I want to focus more on the startup side because this is going to be more of my personal opinion. Um, and I think what honestly makes for a better interviewing uh, result for, for both sides, right? Uh, both sides being you as the person interviewing. And let's say like, you know, the interviewer, me in this case, uh, when I'm looking for candidates. So 
From the startup side, I think I just want to kind of call out a really big difference between sometimes in big tech and startups. And I would say in startups, I think it's a lot more, again, not all the time, but a lot more common that in a startup, you'll have someone who is, you know, the hiring manager, the team member, who's really focused on trying to recruit for their team, kind of doing a lot of the heavy lifting with sourcing the candidates and going through the, the pipeline of candidates to interview them. In big tech, there's you have to think about a really big, almost uh, a pipeline that has automation in it, different uh, groups involved, like literally recruiting departments, HR, um, the team will get involved. Um, but, you know, sometimes in big tech, you'll have teams that are interviewing for general positions and then they try to source where that candidate will end up going. So you get a little bit of a disconnect, I would find. Um, so again, in startups, you get a little bit more call it like an intimate interview where it's probably more for the team that you're you're interviewing with. Um, and I think as a result, you get a better opportunity for as a candidate, um, you probably get a little bit better of a feel for the team that you're interviewing for. And that's a thing I want to remind you as you're going through these videos. So the one I did before this, hopefully you've seen that one already. And I'll mention the next one after, but going through this process, while we're talking about getting you set up for an interview, I think it's really important that you remember you are also interviewing the company that you're interviewing with, right? You want to take this opportunity to understand that it's going to be a place that you do want to work at. Um, you know, just because it's a big tech name or something or the flashiest startup you've heard of doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a place that you want to work at. So take the time to understand the team that you'd be with. Um, and yeah, you can do a lot of that in the interview as well when you have a time uh, period to ask questions. So when we get into some of the technical aspects of uh, like an interview with a maybe a startup or a smaller company, I think my experience has been that yes, you're still gonna have coding questions. It's pretty common, right? They wanna assess your technical abilities. Um, I don't personally think that you get as many sort of like cookie cutter um, trick questions that are like, um, you know, just the, the ones pulled from the endless lists of the, the big tech interviews. Uh, will it happen? Sure. Um, is it as common? I think there's just less focus on it personally. And if you do have those types of questions, I do think that you have interviewers, again, my personal opinion, interviewers that are going to be focused on what I would call the right things. Like how do you navigate some uncertainties and do problem solving, um, a little bit on the fly and less about, did you memorize this algorithm? Because that's not really beneficial. Um, you'll kind of see when we do the third video and we talk about in practice, you can Google most things, you can Bing most things, you can search on the internet for most things. There's Stack Overflow, there's YouTube. Um, so memorizing stuff is a little bit, um, I would say, ridiculous to, to kind of gauge someone's skill. So Yes, you'll get coding questions. I would say maybe expect um, whiteboarding some stuff. Um, if it's a virtual, of course, maybe you'll, um, there's a lot of uh, software and uh, different offerings where you can kind of get like a virtual whiteboard or a virtual coding space and kind of walk through uh, coding questions. So definitely expect that. Um, I think if you're practicing your, your coding and algorithm questions, um, it's not wasted if you're kind of going between big tech and and startups, uh, it's still applicable. I just think that you probably have interviewers that are a little bit more in tune with uh, gauging uh, gauging your abilities in a, a smaller company. It's less of a, oh, I guess I had to sit down and go through these interviews because I was asked to. Just my personal opinion. Um, another thing that uh, I think startups get a little bit more into, or smaller companies, not just smart, uh, startups, is that um, they'll try to look at gauging some of your, your teamwork abilities. So you might actually have the opportunity to pair program on something uh, or walk through some technical challenges together. And this, I think, is a really cool way that, um, that they can gauge some of your teamwork abilities and problem solving in, in like a real environment. So what this could look like is maybe they'll pull up some code. Um, again, if it's virtual, it might be a little bit um, interesting with some screen sharing. Um, but they'll pull up some code um, and maybe say, hey, look, here's an example of a system we have and there's a bug or there's a feature we want to implement and they'll give you some background on it 
and they'll say like, hey, like how do we go about, how do we go about fixing this or implementing this? So, you know, they want to see like, how do you approach problem solving with ambiguity, right? So give you an opportunity to ask questions about the system. Like they might've mentioned a database and there's a problem with the database. And maybe one of the questions you say, well, what kind of database is it, right? Is it a relational database? And they kind of get you to build this picture um, and then see how you want to go like, hey, like, can we go look at this part of the code that might, uh, it sounds like maybe there's a UI bug. Like, can we go look at that and kind of work together? Um, I mentioned too, you want to be interviewing them a little bit too, right? So it's kind of cool if you can see like, hey, like in like in my job, if I were working here, if I had to sit down and work with someone, this is maybe an experience that it would be like. So if it's enjoyable as you're interviewing, that's a good sign. Um, so I think this teamwork assessment kind of thing um, can show up in different ways. So whether it's, you know, problem solving through a bug or um, kind of a pair programming kind of thing. There might be some other techniques that they employ, but I definitely think that startups and small companies uh, can take a little bit more effort in being like creative with trying to assess this. And when you have, in contrast with big tech, it's a little bit more of like a, a pipeline that's a little bit more mechanical. Um, so anyway, that's just a something I wanted to share on that front. And then another thing I think that startups uh, and small companies do um, a really good job of is really like call it like team fit culture kind of thing they want to get I don't like saying like soft skills it's kind of a crappy way to put it um, so it's it's really some of the other pieces that aren't just technical and this is really important in small companies especially um, because as you're bringing on new people um, obviously the culture of your company is going to change right the dynamic of as as people come on, things, things of course change, right? Like the teams grow, you have more teams, there's potentially things are siloing, you have different product offerings, blah, blah, blah. It's going to change. Um, and part of it is that the interviewers want to make sure that, um, that you are someone that they can work with, that you do, you are collaborative, right? If there's any opportunity where they can gauge maybe things where, um, some of the personal interactions might be challenging because you are difficult to work with. There's this opportunity where they can dig into that a little bit more. So they might talk about, you know, if you're fresh out of school or maybe you're going uh, for an internship, right? They might ask about like, hey, like talk to me about some projects you worked on with classmates, right? Um, how did that go? What happened when a problem came up? Like uh, what types of things did you try to take the lead on in the project? And they tried just to get a feel for working with you. Um, and like in big tech and other bigger companies, do they do that? Yes. Um, again, if you're not actually interviewing for that team though, it might feel a little bit weird and, um, maybe a little bit less, uh, personable if, if the interviewer is kind of asking you these questions just cause they need to relay it to someone else. Um, so that's why I kind of use the word, like, uh, it's kind of a weird word to use, but like a little bit more of like an intimate interview. Uh, when you're dealing with startups and small companies, especially around like the fit and the culture piece. So as we talk through this, again, I want to go back to how do you stand out in these interviews, right? Um, we talked about it a little bit for the big tech side, right? It's a little bit trickier because it's a little bit more of a me mechanical process. Um, but I think in a startup, my opinion, uh, like the things I look for especially, um, are, I really like that you're, you're passionate about the thing that you're interviewing for. So for example, um, you know, it might, maybe that passion shows in like, you, you're just really into programming. You like, you can demonstrate that cause you have some hobby projects or you get really excited talking about a past project that you worked on. It could be in the, uh, the domain that you're working in, right? So the software is applicable in so many industries. If you were, going into uh finance you could you know maybe you're excited about like um revolutionizing how uh banking works or if you're in agriculture you're super excited about different aspects of farming or if it's retail like you you know if you think about uh, these different industries that you could be working in from the software side being able to step to demonstrate passion in some way i think is uh something that's really appealing for a startup because a lot of the time startups are looking for people that are excited to be getting work done and kind of rallying together. 
Um, so personally, I really like seeing that. Um, obviously on the software side, if you're really into coding, to me that stands out, but if it, I don't expect that everyone's gonna be going home like after a day of coding and then opening up their laptop and saying, cool, well, like, I'm just gonna code some more. Um, maybe, like I personally like to program, but I don't expect that of people. What passions do you have, right? Um, do you like rock climbing? Do you like going for dance class? Do you like going to the gym, playing a sport? Like just seeing that people are passionate about certain things is really, I think, a standout kind of thing in a uh, in an interview, personally. Um, another big thing, I kind of mentioned this about the memorizing of questions and like answering them in an interview. I don't like that as much as I like seeing that people are eager to learn. So I personally don't care how much you know or have memorized before the interview because when you're working it's always going to be about new things coming up and these opportunities where you're faced with situations where you have to learn it's always going to happen so like if you are someone who is eager to learn willing to learn excited by new challenges and stuff to me that really stands out if you know a ton of stuff and i i get the feeling somehow through our interview that like you're a little bit closed-minded, you're not really willing to, to try new things and explore and, um, and learn and be challenged, then I'm like, well, <laughs> you're kind of uh, putting a box around yourself for how, like, your growth potential, right? I'm much more excited to hire people that are, uh, that are just willing to learn uh, and grow. And then the last part I touched on already is, uh, is collaboration. So if you have examples of things like projects you worked on with team members, um, you know, in school or outside of school or, or previous jobs kind of thing. Uh, even if it's not in software, I think it's a really cool way to show that you had um, collaborative experiences. So in the third phase, when we talk through this uh, this other video that I'll create, um, I want to, it's a spoiler, I guess, but I want to call out that like a lot of software engineering is, of course, the technical stuff we think about all the time as programmers. But I think a bigger piece of that is sort of this non-technical stuff, like working with other people, I think is one of the biggest challenges in software engineering. And I think that a lot of people don't talk about this and think about it. But if you are someone who is managing teams and this is on your mind, I think, you know, especially in like a startup environment, this is something that's on your mind and you want to bring people on that can collaborate. So. Uh, if you want to stand out even more, I say have examples of that that you can share and talk through and like why you are a great person to work with. Um, so I think that's it for today. So just a quick, quick recap. Um, in the second phase, we're talking about, you know, when you actually have the interview, what does that look like? How do you stand out? Kind of talked about big tech being, um, you know, primarily a set of coding and algorithm questions, right? lots of resources online for that. You can stand out by actually understanding those algorithms, not just memorizing them. So if you get some curveballs, you can talk through it. And then I was kind of saying that from the, the startup perspective, um, you, you're gonna get coding questions as well, but there's probably a little bit more opportunity for like demonstrating your teamwork abilities, uh, maybe culture and fit, that kind of thing for, for being on the team and how easy you are to work with. Um, and I think from here in the next video, as I mentioned, we'll talk about, great, now you've gone through the interview process and uh, now that you're on the job, what does that look like? All right, so um, if you enjoyed this, please like the video if you're watching it on YouTube. Uh, subscribing would be great. Let's me know that you like content like this. And otherwise, thank you for watching and hopefully watch the next one.